Hello and welcome to this second video on vine copulas. Um, I've covered some of the basics in the first video. Now I'm going to be talking a little bit more about how we describe uh, the structure of vine copulas and some of the requirements and background and useful taxonomy that uh, we need to know for some of the more complex stuff we'll be doing later with, uh, with various vine copulas. So when we're looking at vine copulas, it's quite helpful to think about it in terms of something called graph theory. Um, vine copulas can have a lot of different constructions and vine, uh, graph theory gives us a way of, gives us a vocabulary that we can use to, to describe these constructions more accurately. Now, um, maths is very good at accurate representations, accurate descriptions. Um, not necessarily the most obvious to uh, non-mathematicians or to people who aren't mathematical specialists. So, so what I've done here is I've looked at some of the terms that get used, um, shown how they're represented mathematically, and then given a plain English explanation next to them. So the first thing is a, a node, which is just something which can be connected to something else. There's something that's being x1, x2, all the way up to xn, and, and these make the, the node set n. Um, and what is it that connects the various nodes together? Well, that's known as an edge. Um, as it says here, the, the, the thing that joins nodes together. And, and together all these um, edges make up the set E. So you can see this, whereas for nodes, set N is made up of individual things, X1, X2, and all the way up to Xn. The edge set is made up of pairs. So X1, X2 is the first pair, X1, X3 is the second pair, and so on. So the edge set is defined in terms of the nodes that the edge connects. Um, if you've got nodes next to each other, directly connected by an edge, then they're said to be adjacent. And the number of edges which are joined to a particular node XA, um, that's the number of neighbours that XA had, which mathematically is the degree of XA or D of XA, um, where XA is something which belongs, it's, it's a node, which belongs to the, the, the node set. And finally, we've got something called a graph. Now, a graph is defined uh, by a pair of sets, N and E, so the nodes and the edges. So a graph is really just any connection of nodes and edges. And not all graphs can be vine copulas, but all vine copulas are, are graphs. So, in vine copulas, graph theory has got the following kind of meaning. So a node kind of represents a distribution function for a particular variable. Um, an edge describes kind of the bivariate copula joining those two distribution functions. And uh, the number of neighbours is the number of bivariate copulas that you've got attached to a particular variable or, or its distribution function. So, in other words, you could describe nodes as uh, f of x1, f of x2, and so on. You could describe edges as um, the copula C of f of x1, f of x2, uh, and so on. It's, that's not exactly correct, and sometimes we talk in terms of density functions rather than distribution functions, but the broad structure is individual variables are nodes, and something copula-like is, is the edge. So in terms of vine structures, there are two basic fundamental vine constructions that exist. The first is known as a canonical vine or a C vine. And this is where you've got one node at the center and then all of the other nodes are connected to that single node by edges. Um, now this is useful if you've got one variable driving or highly correlated to all of the other nodes. So if, for example, you're looking at um, one large stock market and lots of smaller um, stock markets that are geographically close, then you know, a sea vine might be a good model for that. The second fundamental vine structure is a, a drawable vine or a D vine. And this is where you've got um, each node joined sequentially to the next node. So um, Every node is connected to two other nodes, apart from the ones at the start of the finish, which are just connected to one. And this is useful if you've got some kind of um, linear causation between the different nodes or the different variables that you're looking at. Now, it can be helpful to contrast C vines and D vines with traditional copulas and look at the difference between them. So as you can see on the top right, we've got 
um, a C vine which has um, X1 at the center and that's joined to X2, X3 and X4 and X2 and X3 and X4 aren't joined to each other, they're only joined to that central, uh, that central node. For a D vine you've got X1 or F of X1 is joined to F of X2, F of X2 to F of X3, F of X3 to F of X4. So, um, you haven't got any links between, say, f of x1 or f of x3, not, not explicitly anyway. Whereas a traditional copula, x1, x2, x3, and x4, so a four variable copula, each of them is connected to each of the other nodes. Or to put it another way, those, all of those relationships are explicitly defined in that copula. Now, as we'll see later on, you do have to sometimes allow for links between, say, two and four and three and four with the um, with the C vine when you're looking at the likelihood because the structure implies some sort of relationship. But in terms of what you're explicitly um, setting out when, you, when you're building the shape of your copula, a C vine um, has one thing at the center and everything joined to it. A D vine is a line. Traditional copula, all of those relationships between all the variables are explicitly defined at the outset. So C vines and D vines can be combined to give a regular vine, an R vine. And, and when we're looking at vines in, in real life, they'll rarely be either a C vine or a D vine. It's probably going to be something more complicated. Having said that, all R vines are made from either C vines or D vines or a combination of them. Or to put it another way, a C vine or a D vine is a special case of an R vine. So if I just take off f of x6 and f of x4, what I'm left with is a C vine. If I take off f of x5 and f of x6, what I'm left with is a D vine. Or if I take off f of x3 and f of x4 again, what I'm left with is a D vine. Now, when we look at the structure of an R vine, all R vines have n nodes and n minus 1 edges. And you can also say each edge is part of the probability density calculation for the next layer. So we'll talk about that um, in a later video. But essentially what this means is that if this is the first level that we're looking at, you could take the second level as being a tree made up of the edges from the first level. And then that itself would have its own edges, which could then be cascaded down to become the tree in the next level and, and so on. And this is important when it comes to trying to fit a copula and when we try to look at how well a particular structure is fitting a particular copula because all of the dependencies that are implied there become very important. A C vine must have a center component and a D vine must form a path. So this is just essentially restating what we've already discussed. But these are core definitions for what make a C vine and a D vine. Now finally, there's some particular characteristics of vines that make them uh, vines and not just any other sort of graph. So for example, our vines are undirected. Um, f of x1 doesn't lead to f of x2 or vice versa. Now if you had a directed relationship then um, looking at that top diagram, all the edges would be arrows. And I know I said when I was talking about um, large and small stock markets that the large ones might drive the smaller ones, but what we also should be familiar with is the saying that correlation doesn't imply causation. Certainly when we're looking at vine structures, correlations don't imply causation. So our vines are undirected. It's also true to say that every R vine is also a tree. So all of the nodes are connected by a unique path. Now what this means is two things. First, connected. If you look at the bottom graph there, that's a disconnected graph. So there's no way of getting from, say, f of x1 to f of x5 because there's no connection between them. Um, an R vine, being a tree, is connected. More than that, um, all nodes are connected by a unique path. So if you look again at that bottom one, if you want to get from x, uh, f of x1 to f of x3, there's only one route to do it, through f of x2. There's no other way of getting from f of x1 to f of x3. If you look at the top um, diagram, if you want to get from f of x1 to f of x4, you could go f of x1 to f of x2 to f of x4, or you could go f of x1 to f of x2 
to fx3 to fx4. So there's more than one way. So, so that, even if it didn't have the arrows, wouldn't be a tree. Also, um, there are no cycles in a tree or, or in an R vine. So there's no way of following a path to get to a previously visited node. So if you go from fx1 to fx3 in the bottom graph, you've got to go through fx2. And if you wanted to go back to fx1, you've got to go back the way you came. Whereas in the top chart, you could go from x2 to x3 to x4, then back to x2 again. So that creates a cycle and you can't have cycles in a tree or in an R-vine. So that's enough for now. That gives us something about the structure, which is quite important because the whole point about R-vines is, is how they are structured. Um, but from here, we can now start looking at how we do start building R-vines and how we start evaluating them. So the first two uh, videos that I've done, they really give you all the background and the vocabulary that you need to start talking about um, building a vine copula. And that is what we will be doing next time.